Hello and welcome to another episode of the Leo Alves podcast and in today's episode I've got a good friend of mine on if you consistently listen to my podcast you would have heard him come on a few times before I think this is like his fifth episode now I've lost count I don't really know uh, it's Miles a good friend of mine went to school with him we lived together at university done the same degree and uh, I thought, you know what, let's do another podcast episode together because number one, I'd like to get, to get him on every once in a while just because he is someone I speak to frequently. He's another coach. And number two, it's, it's been a while since, again, yeah, we we did a podcast together and I think, and I, and I also haven't been doing many features recently as well. So I thought, you know what, this would be a good excuse to just have someone else to, uh, what's the word, shoot the shit with and uh, and just see where it goes. And otherwise, you know what, Miles, you've you've introduced yourself on several other podcast episodes before. So you know what we'll do? We'll just like do, and I'm going to put you under a little bit of pressure here, like a, a 60 minute quick introduction about yourself and then we'll get started. So over to oh, you. Goodness. That's tough. Um, cool. 60 second introduction. <clears throat> so my name is Miles. Uh, as Leo mentioned, we studied the same um, degree at university. Uh I have worked in sport, I've worked with different populations in personal training, group training, all that stuff. Currently, I'm working for Exos at Google, and I'm also doing online coaching as well. And I guess that's the that's the most. I love anime too. I, I, I should throw that in there. You've got but, 30 seconds yeah. left. Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> no, I'm playing. <laughs> I have no time in it. All right. Yeah, that's 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 all right. You know what? Yeah, that's pretty much it in a, in its simplest form. So yeah, and, and we do the same thing now, which is a lot of online coaching. I know you still work in, in person as well, which yeah. is which is cool. Uh, otherwise, you know what? Mars has got no idea what I thought I, w- what I wanted to speak about on today's podcast episode. So I thought, you know, I just, I, and I came up with this not long ago, not, I mean, not long before starting. And uh, anyway, I thought, you know what? This would be a brilliant subject to speak about because it's something I've never covered on the podcast ep- or on any podcast episode before. I don't think I've ever written an article about it. I don't think I don't think I've ever made a YouTube video about it. So this isn't really something I've ever spoken about. It's gym etiquette. Gym etiquette. etiquette. And gym etiquette. That's what I said. So, <laughs> and I, I just thought that would be a really good one to speak about because obviously there's new people joining the gym all the time. And sometimes, and actually, actually, probably not even sometimes, this probably happens quite often where I think a lot of people end up leaving a gym just because they don't really feel very comfortable there because they don't really know just you know these unwritten rules and uh, and and they find themselves yeah that, that that and they pick up on that and then they don't really know what to do they overthink it they end up leaving before they've even yeah. given themselves a chance so i thought it'd just be really good just to like break down a list of do's and don'ts at the gym in no particular order and because uh, i know you're gonna have a bunch coming to mind as we speak about it and i've got a bunch in mind as well that we can mention and um and otherwise if you're more than happy to speak about that well you're you're gonna have to be because i've got nothing else in mind (laughs) they have a choice Uh, yeah well we'll get started so number one and i think this is probably the most popular one that you know everyone i think it's probably the number one thing that comes to mind for everyone is just put your shit back oh yeah yes don't get me started on that one that's probably the most frustrating one there is is you know not putting weights back or I should say intentionally not putting things back I mean there's, there's going to be times where you, you honestly just forget you know you put someone down after it's been a hard set and you think oh fucking hell I'm glad that's finished and you might walk away that's understandable but if you're doing this all this every single time and it's big weights you're leaving it as well you know leaving plates out or dumbbells just lying about it's honestly just a nightmare not just for me to clean up but it's just selfish and irresponsible of you because it's in other people's way as well and it makes you and what i've noticed is that when let's say there's a there might be a bench out there and there's a dumbbell next to it or a pair of dumbbells i don't know if that bench is being used or not so now i'm i'm there standing like oh do i I use it do i not use it but you've probably gone into your fifth or sixth exercise you know so put your stuff back is this key yeah and with me there's just two examples that come to mind straight away but before i even say give you those examples or, or share those examples i don't think i've ever told you actually i don't even think i've sp- spoken to you about these examples before is um but before i even say those is i always say just look at putting your weights back as part of your workout because that is mm-hmm. what it is ultimately at the end of the day it's part of your workout and 
yeah, you've got to put your weights back or you haven't even finished your workout. You didn't do everything that you were meant to do for that particular day or that particular workout, I should say. So first of all, I do agree with everything you said. And then two other specific examples come to mind that I have experienced at the gym, which is number one. I remember many years ago when I when I lived in South London, when I was living in Fort and Heath, to be precise, I was working out at a gym located in Norbury. If you're local, you'll know where that is. And I'll never forget, there was a lady who wanted to use the leg press machine and she couldn't use it because the leg press machine was like stacked out with weights. It, like it was full of 20 kg plates and she couldn't lift it. She couldn't take it off. And I, I saw her struggling. Obviously, I went over. I did that for her. I, I took all of them off and I started speaking to her a bit. And then she was telling me basically that she can't lift much weight at all because she's recently recovered from spinal surgery like she had surgery on her spine so just people doing that and leaving all their weights on it's, it's just completely inconsiderate because you are going yeah. to have people that come in they've recently recovered from surgery they can't really lift much weight and like you're leaving over 200 kg on your leg press like it's quite selfish um yeah. and then as well as that and oh I'll, I'll never forget as well when i worked at a gym this is like a, a this next one is just a, a bit of my own tangent is I remember, I remember there was a guy who used to work out quite frequently at the gym in Fulham where I was working and he was a nice guy I always spoke to him when he was there I would say hello and have uh, a little uh, and speak a bit but he always used to leave his weights out and I never understood that and if I didn't see, and and it was just strange to me and I always and he would try and leave and not like and just not put them back and it wasn't like where he was like playing around or anything like he, he would genuinely leave them there if he could get away with it and I was just like come on you yeah. gotta put them away like what is this and this guy had a really good high up position job within the company yeah. and it was just strange to me i was like so because you, you're leaving those out and you know that i'm one of the few staff members that are here so are you leaving those out for me to put away i, I don't yeah. understand like it, honestly it, it makes no sense it really makes no sense yeah I've, I've seen things where people leave the weights literally by the place where they're meant to put it back so they'll make the whole journey to the rack and it's put on the floor. And it's like, why, why, why can't you just do that extra step that, you know, just put it back? Mm. But I guess we'll never know why people do that. I think that that's an international problem with gyms. But if you are new to training or just getting into the gym, please just put your stuff back, honestly. You'll yeah, save yourself it, a lot of hassle. It's just pure laziness. There isn't really, there, there, it can't be anything else. Um, yeah. But otherwise, did you have a second point that you wanted to mention before? I have a I have a few things in front of me. If you didn't have anything that came to mind, for well, gym etiquette or just for yeah, yeah gym, gym etiquette. Ah, uh, gym etiquette. Um, ask someone if they're using using the kit. You know, if, if, it might sound silly, but there's been situations where you know there might be a bit of kit there, and you may see someone standing next to it, and you might just jump onto it. Just honestly, just give them a little tap and say, "Hey, sorry, are you using this still?" Yes or no? If they if they are, just and see if you can jump in. That way, you know you can, you're getting you're getting used to the kit still, and you're not there waiting around. And if they're not, either way, you get to use it. So it's a win win, really. Just give them a tap and ask, because it can be quite of a shock when someone jumps into your kit mid mid set, you know. But yeah, I, I definitely get what you mean with that one, and that was actually something I had, like I, I had a I have a list in front of me, and that was actually one thing that came to mind as well, which was a, uh, you know, let uh, people jump into your set when it makes sense of yeah. course because obviously there are times where it maybe doesn't really make sense if someone is maybe doing a barbell bench press and you know they're a lot stronger than the other person who wants to jump in mm -hmm. it wouldn't really make sense to maybe take 200 kg off to for someone else to do like 20 kg and then and uh, and vice versa so yeah you know that's that's something to think about because then obviously you'd have to adjust the height of the um, of the of the safety rack on the side so you know, but there there are times where it's just very easy to jump in where potentially it's with a machine mm. where you don't really have to change anything. So it could be a chest press machine. And I'll never forget. Um, and you know what? To be honest, one thing I do want to say, if you're listening and you feel nervous about that, trust me, nine out of 10 times, people will be more than happy for you to jump on with them. Honestly. Um, I would say maybe ask them how many sets they have left before you do. If they've got like one or two more sets and I would probably just maybe leave them to it. Like, okay, this call, cool. I, I don't need to jump on with you. You know, if they've got like maybe three, four, five sets, then you could be like, okay, you know what, let's take it and turns out at the end of the day, it's a public gym and uh, we, we can, you know, all have access to this. And I'll never forget. I remember I had a, another experience in Norbury as well in the, in the gym there. 
I asked someone how many sets they had left. They had four more. And I asked if it was okay if I jump on with them. And they were like, no, this is mine. I never forgot that. It was like a lady in her like maybe mid to late forties. I never forgot. And, um, and, uh, and I, I know she wasn't, she was, she, I think she was new to the gym as well. So okay. I don't think she really understood that. And that's okay. But you know, I, I didn't even say anything. I was just like, yeah. Okay. It, it, yeah, I've, I've been in a similar situation to you. Yeah. Where, when I was younger, I remember I asked her, she must be, I think when I was younger, I may have been 17, 18, and I asked her as well. I was like, oh, sorry, can I jump in this? And the way she looked at me is like, uh, no, you freak. You can't. I was like, oh, sorry. But it was, again, I think it was a communication issue where she didn't understand what I was trying to say with kind of use the kit, like jumping with you. But that was a long time ago. It's just having yeah. that, just having an understanding of, you know, if, what, what I'm asking from trying to use it. Yeah, it's like you know, at the end of the day, you know, every it's a it's a public gym. Everyone's paying the the member for the membership. You know, I might be I might be low on time as much as you are low on time. And again, it's a it's a shared space. So you know, if someone asks you to jump on, then definitely consider saying yes. Again, when it makes sense. If it's an overly maybe if it's like a, a barbell where you have to keep adjusting the weights, then maybe not. Or if you've got like one or two more sets, but you can just say oh, i'm nearly done but otherwise yeah do do be considerate of others and again nine out of ten times people will say yes i always say yes um but yeah otherwise this is a very important one as well and i think and and this is probably one of the most common one common ones i see alongside people le leaving their stuff out is don't ex don't do your exercises right in front of the dumbbell rack <laughs> that happens yeah, a lot just, yeah that, that can be that can be selfish of people to do that. It's... At, at all gyms as well, like wherever yeah. I've been in the world, I see that happen a lot. Yeah, you know, doing your bicep curls right in front of the mirror because you know extra gains the closer you get to the mirror. But yeah, it's like um, it's like it's not even hard. It's like take your dumbbells and take four steps back. Yeah, honestly, honestly, simple as. Yeah, unless your gym's absolutely dead quiet, then cool, do what you want. But if you know it's peak times, please just you know create let let everyone have their space because if it's yeah. busy. It's going to be hot in there as well. If people are sweating, working out, just give people a bit of space and a room to move about, especially when grabbing dumbbells. Yeah, it, it just doesn't make any sense as well. It's another one that doesn't make any sense because at the end of the day, working out in front of the dumbbell rack means that when someone else is likely going to need the dumbbells that you're standing right in front of, they then can't grab it because you're in front of them. So they're going to yeah. have to, you know, now it's inconvenient for them and it's inconvenient for you as well now because you're being distracted mid-set and the last thing you want to be is like just being distracted mid-set you want to be able to focus so now it's just a, it's a it's a loss loss for everyone you do people yeah, say that honestly. yeah so it's just everyone loses with that <clears throat> so it doesn't honestly. make sense was there anything else you wanted to add to that one yeah i had, I had a couple that literally just came to my mind so the first one is um this one's definitely been highlighted more since covid but wiping down kit benches just give things a wipe down honestly it's it's um it may seem quite tedious but please if you use it just give a quick wipe that's that's all i ask it's um i've been in many situations where i've come to a bench and it just looks like it's someone's it's been sweating on it heavy and it doesn't hygienic it's not very it's not very hygienic i should say so if you do go to the gym anything you use give it a spray give it a wipe and that's that and that's really a simple one honestly just keep things clean Mm. Yeah, I I uh, I I agree a lot with that one. Just because I've seen some nasty benches after people yeah. from them, like gross, yeah. drenched in sweat, and people don't even think to wipe that. Don't don't even think. Don't yeah, even it's, think. it's mind blowing. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. Especially when you get those people who just sweat a ton. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Definitely make sure you're wiping down your benches, and um. You know, I feel like we're saying like a lot of things like that you should be you should be mindful yeah, of it, sure. etc. Do do you know? Obviously, make notes of this, and uh, I do want to say at the end of the day, before we we continue adding more things, is that understand that I, I want you to understand that gyms are definitely one of the most accepting places in the world. It's one of the most accepting places in the world. You're always going to you're going to feel welcome. But, you know, or maybe there is always that one or two. There's there's that always that exception where there's one or two people who. I, I don't know. You might not like them. But again, yeah. generally speaking, gyms are definitely one of the most welcoming places in the world. They're always going to be open. They're going to be full of people who want you to be better, who are trying to better themselves as well. 
And uh, and that's something that I, I want a lot of people to understand that I, I don't think they realize, which is also why they're intimidated of stepping into the gym. Mm. Yeah, it's understandable, you know, especially in a, in a gym environment, it can be quite, um, it, it can be an, an, an aggressive feel. I don't want to say aggressive, but you can kind of get that feel from it. You know, you could, you've got people in there who may be training for different reasons or have a different kind of goal where they want, they're lifting heavy and they like to be motivated by being really hyped up. But then, like I said, because there's so many different people there, maybe others in the gym who don't have that focus, but you might not see them just because the earlier half was put more overpowering. But it's it's just, it's a place where everyone's goals are different. Everyone has different focus. As long as you're aware of what your goals are and those are internalized within you, it's your playground. Hmm. Yeah. So but did you want to add anything else to that before I actually mention the next point? Uh, no, I don't think I have anything else to add for that. Okay, well, I think this one is actually a very good one. And I think because there's actually a lot of injury risk that can potentially come with it that I don't think a lot of people realize, which is don't speak to someone when they're mid-set. Yeah. That's a big one. And I and I don't think a lot of people think about that. Does that happen to you often? Um. Yeah, I've had people ask me questions mid-set while I'm literally fighting for my life. And they said, oh, sorry, mate, where's the, um, where's the barbells? I was like, oh, I'm dying, but they're over there, but around the corner, <laughs> you know, it's because it's my, my mannerisms, I, I, would, I want to respond to you, but at the times it might sound quite rude and abrupt, but I'm literally trying to fight for my life with this bar over my head. That's why I, it sounds so rush. Yeah. No, you know what? If I'm mid-set, I'm not even giving a response because it's like, yeah, you yeah. can see I'm, I'm, you can see I'm handling a lot of weight right now. Like I, I need to focus. You beast. Because at the end of the day, if I injure myself, you're not going to be looking after me. Yeah, it's true. It's true. So I need to focus and you can wait 10 seconds for me to finish, for me to give you a response. And I'll tell them, you know, sorry, I was I was mid-set. I, I needed to focus. I don't want to hurt myself or anything. But, you know, and then answer their question. But yeah, th that's just something that's uh, very um, important, I think, to bear in mind as well. So if you are new to the gym, then do make sure that you're not speaking to someone in the middle of their set and definitely wait for them to finish unless it's a life or death situation you know but that's rarely going to be the case at the gym yeah. so otherwise just wait for them to finish their exercise and then speak to them you know you you you've got plenty of time uh yeah. otherwise the next one and the reason why i mentioned the next one because actually i got a random flashback of again in norbury so that this Norway gym event. sounds like that, 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 it was an eventful gym. I don't want to. I don't want to name the company, but it was definitely uh, there, there. A lot used to happen there, and, uh, but I always went there because obviously it was my local gym, and and the next closest one after that was just very far away. So I didn't really have a choice, and I had it for free, uh, the membership, uh, because I worked for the company in a different area. But I remember seeing this happening sometimes. Is people there was so, sometimes someone would bring their speakers to play their yeah, music yeah. out loud in a public yeah. gym. <laughs> I've seen that as well. Uh, that's, I don't, that's I, I don't know why people do that. And I, I get gym music is not the best, but yeah. there are certain guidelines you have to, adhere, they have to adhere to. That's why you can't have certain music. But I don't think you need to bring a whole speaker set to, you know, come to the gym. There's headphones or if you don't have headphones, maybe if you, if you are going to play music, Still on your phone, but keep it at a respectable volume if that is the worst case scenario. I, I wouldn't even suggest that. I say just put in earphones, or you just have to, or you know, like tough luck, man. Start with the gym music because, again, it's a shared space. And I think that's just, I, I think it's quite inconsiderate. You know, if you're the only one in the gym, then fair enough, go for it. But that's not often going to be the case. And, uh, yeah. and yeah, and bringing your own speakers is just. It's just silly. And, you know, maybe to some people on here listening to this podcast episode, I, I might just sound like a, some sort of Karen, but trust me, I, I, I can, I speak for a lot of people when I do say it, it's, it's inconsiderate. And, you know, regardless, if I like the music, then, you know, okay, fair, it is what it is. But I just think it, at the end of the day, you should just bring your earphones. And, uh, and if you don't bring your earphones and tough luck, like, yeah. don't be playing your music out loud when the gym is busy. And, you know, imagine everyone else start doing that as well. It would just be chaotic in there. Very true. Did you have anything else you wanted to add to that? Yeah, one, one, I, uh, one I've noticed that I've always won't notice it until they're in a situation. But as a PT and I do group training as well, so I teach a fair bit of classes throughout the week. Um, is the use of the uh, class space. So 
some some gyms or some places have studios dedicated for classes only, which is great, but some gyms don't. So if it's like a strength class, they might want to use the, gym, the actual gym floor itself. And I've been in many situations where I've got a class, it's busy, a lot of things going on, and then there's other people within the gym space too. Not, not That's not my issue. It's when the uh, other people in the gym space are kind of coming into the, the class a bit too much and it's a bit too much when, you know, you have kind of monitor areas. So all I all I say is for most is just be mindful of be mindful of the surroundings your surroundings because you don't know what's going on around you and if there is a class going on near you just ask hey can I just you know do certain exercises here and there and most of the time the instructor is going to say yes unless it's you no know, it's really busy and they're using all that kit but yeah just be mindful of that a lot of people don't notice it and that's understandable but as the coach I see it a lot and it can be quite frustrating when you know you don't want to have too much going on in one space. Mm. And you know what, that brings up another good point, which is like, be considerate of the equipment. And there's so many ways we can take this down, which is the way you mentioned, uh, the way so the way you said it, or like how long you're on a piece of equipment for. Let's say there's the, going back to Norbury Gym again, there was this one guy who was notorious for just spending like an hour on the Yoni Smith machine in the gym. Oh, so really? I knew for a fact that if I walked in and I saw him at the gym, I wasn't getting the Smith machine that day. Yeah. And and it's just so you know if if you know that like, what, what are you doing so long on that piece of kit that's what that's what confuses me. Or if there's only one barbell rack and then they're spending an hour, like I think that's also in, inconsiderate as well. Mm-hmm. So I think you know in regard to just uh you know respecting everyone who goes there. At the end of the day, I understand that everyone is paying for their membership, but you don't need to spend an hour or even 40, 45, 60 minutes on 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 a single piece of equipment. Mm. 100%, and unless 100%. and you know and if that is the case then maybe your work at your maybe your workout intensity isn't very good maybe you're spending way too much time resting maybe you're spending way too much time talking or daydreaming or whatever it might be because i don't uh, yeah 45 minutes on a single piece of equipment doesn't make sense yeah yeah, yeah. i hate you for that one so so yeah there is that uh another way another way i can take the sound when i i say be considerate of the equipment and this is something this is something I see a lot, and I'm sure you can relate. And I feel like a, the the listener can definitely relate to, uh, relate to this as well. Is so I'm going to give a specific example, and then you'll get what I mean. Let's say you've got one Smith machine in the entire gym, and then let's say you've got like three benches in the in the free weights area, mm-hmm. and like let's say only one's being used. So there's two still two free benches. Meanwhile, someone will be using the bench. We're under the Smith that's at the Smith machine to do like a dumbbell chest press or a dumbbell shoulder press. Mm. So they are they are using the area where so they're using up the area where the only Smith machine in the gym is to do an exercise that they could very well do elsewhere. I suppose, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, does that yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I think that's I think that's very inconsiderate as well. Yeah, for sure. It's it's not it's not needed. It's annoying. That is annoying. Yeah. 100%. When, when I've seen that happen, and I've been in the situation where I've needed to use again, I'm just using the Smith Machine example because that has happened to me recently. I'm just like, are you using this? And I can obviously mm-hmm. they're not. And then they're just like, oh no, 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 I'm not, I'm not. And then they move away. But in my head, I'm just thinking, come on, like let's just think about other people using this gym yeah. as well you've got so yeah. much space in the area where you're actually meant to be doing this and you've just decided to take your dumbbells all the way over here i don't i don't understand that one that one and um doing bicep curls on a squat rack that one as yeah. well <laughs> that's another one criminal for people have been criminal for i don't know i really don't know why people decide to do that it's i guess it could be a bit of laziness as well not actually wanting to move over to another bit of the gym when they see the, the bench there like cool, i'll just go there do my set quick but it varies mm, yeah yeah it is what it is but yeah at the end of the day the important thing is that the listener now understands this and just and basically what we're saying here is just be more aware of you know the equipment especially when there's only one or two of something so yeah just just be aware of that um another consider uh, equipment consideration so again there's many ways that we can take this on is another one is like supersetting five things at once so that's enough yeah. of just hogging the hogging the equipment again yeah Wait, you don't yeah. need to be hogging five things at once maybe two or maybe two max maybe three if you're going to push it but you know if you're 
using five or six different machines in your massive superset, that's I think that's a, a, a bit I think that's inconsiderate as well. I bet you gotta think about what is actually being effective at this point. Sure, there's situations where you, you might be doing like a like an am rap as many reps as po- as many rounds as possible, or kind of a I don't know a hit style session where you're trying to hit loads of different movements. But really and truly, for most of us who want to you know get stronger, improve physique, we're going to be focused on that that strength element. And if you're doing so many different movements in a superset, it comes down to the question: is what movements are actually effective to my muscles growing and getting stronger, and what else is just um you know fluff work as we call it. So yeah, that's that's what I say when people are doing so many different so many different movements in their superset, which ones are actually beneficial and which ones aren't. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh that's just something else. That's it's just another thing to be considerate of. And uh and the last thing I, I I the last way I could potentially take this down is when people are just unnecessarily using a piece of equipment and you're probably thinking like, what am I speaking about? Like the way my mind is going down is I remember this was many years ago when I was in Norbury Gym. Uh, no, this time it wasn't <laughs> in, in uh, Streatham, <laughs> a different gym. And I remember there wasn't many clips in this gym. It wasn't a very big gym, but one of the few clips. So one of the few clips that were available was being used on the Smith machine. Okay. So, I mean- okay uh, that doesn't which doesn't make sense because yeah. obviously if you're listening to this and you've used the smith machine before you'll know it's one of the safest it's one of the safest machines at the gym to use so you don't need to use clips for it like it, it stabilizes itself mm. uh, so you, yeah you you never need to use clips for the smith machine but I, I saw clips were being used on the smith machine and when i mentioned it to them i was like oh like a I, I can't even remember what I said. This was when I was a teenager. So this was so many years ago. And uh, this was before I even knew what I was properly doing at the gym. But I knew enough to know that that wasn't necessary. And uh, I just remember saying, oh, and I had spoken to them a bit. So this isn't like I never really spoke to them before. But I remember I was like, oh, you do realize you don't really need those clips on there. And mm. I, if you don't mind, would it be okay if I use them? And I don't think they even believed me because they didn't let me use them and they continued to use it. So it's just like, okay, whatever. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so you just got to be equipped. So basically this whole, I don't know, like last five, 10 minute tangent is basically us saying, just be very considerate of the equipment. Again, especially if it's, if you're not the only one there, which is rarely the case. And, uh, and you know, you, you're sharing the gym with multiple people at once. Just be considerate yeah. with uh, how long you're using something. Uh, definitely don't be using it for like 40, 50, 60 minutes, uh, which isn't hard to be honest. And, uh, you know, just be aware of which, like where you're doing your exercises, if you're hogging several bits of equipment at once and, um, and just if you're unnecessarily using something and, you know, a lot, and, you know, I feel like we've said a lot so far throughout this podcast and maybe someone who's never stepped into a gym might be thinking, oh, there's so much to remember. I don't know how I'm going Mm -hmm. to remember all of this, but once you're there, you realize that a lot of these things are actually just common decency anyway. So you wouldn't really have to listen to this podcast to maybe know like you shouldn't do most of these things. These are just things that, you know, someone who has respect for the equipment and the space would be doing anyway. So it's not going to be hard to remember this. 100%. Honestly, it's it's nothing, it's nothing groundbreaking that we're saying. It's It's really just highlighting certain actions that we've seen and just kind of remind you, you guys that just try to be mindful of X, Y, and Z. But if honestly, it's just such common sense when you see things happening. You know, you wouldn't leave your house messy. You wouldn't let, you wouldn't, wouldn't let someone come to your house and leave plates everywhere, you know, mm. or just damage your furniture. So, same situation, same situation, but in a gym environment. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and then the and then uh, I've got like one or two more. Do you have anything else that you wanted to bring up? Uh, hmm. Oh, one thing is um. Like bringing bags onto the gym floor, oh, absolutely yeah, yeah. fine. I put my bag onto the gym onto the gym floor because you know I don't have my my padlock. I can't use a locker, but just keep make sure you keep it close to you and it's not in the way of other people. Because of course it can be a trip hazard. And I <laughs> one time I never forget I was um in the gym. I I've, I always wear over ear headphones. I like to be really immersed in my music, really in my zone. And um, I was going to get a weight, and there was a really? guy. He was on, like a platform. He there was, there was good space between all of us between me and him and I was, I was walking I was walking I was walking 
I stepped down. I was like, oh, what the hell was that? And I walked to get my grab my weight. I turned back. The guys look at me in absolute shock and disbelief. I'm like, uh, I was like, you're right there, mate. He's like, oh, mate, you just, you just stepped to my phone. I looked down. His phone was absolutely just smashed. Clearly, I didn't. I stepped on it so hard. I didn't realize it. But it was silly because the phone was so far away from him that it was easy to step on. And I, of course, I felt bad because I stepped on someone's phone. But in reality, your phone shouldn't be so far away. If you're going to keep it close to you or keep it in the corner or something like that, it would have made more sense where mm. no one's going to, it's not like the walking path of the weights. So, and he he was pretty understanding about that as well, which is nice. But yeah, it just goes back to that point. If you've got stuff with you, personal items, just keep it close to you, close to your bench. Or if it is a, like a small place to hide them or put them in the corner, put them there, just out of the way of people. Mm, yeah. Yeah. I agree. It's a, it's a, it's a hazard as well. It could have hurt. Someone could in, you know, that's probably, that's probably like the best play, uh, best case scenario of, you know, accident of stepping on someone's thing or someone's thing being in the way or in just, just being in your way, like yeah. worst case scenario. And what can very well happen is maybe if it was something slightly bigger, like a bag and you were carrying, you were handling heavy weight and you didn't see that you trip over it and you injure yourself. Yeah. So there's that. Um, so yeah, it's definitely something that's a that's a good point and one I didn't think about as well. Um yeah. I, I think this kind of goes back to one that we previously spoke about. But it's like when you put your weights away, put it in the right place as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're, yeah. They're, they're labeled for a reason. Yeah, yeah, put it in the right place as well. Just yeah. because that that's just it's not hard to do either. Yeah, it's, it's and I guess it's annoying when you're going to put your weights in the right section, but someone else has put theirs in your place. And it's like, so why are there thirties where my twelve kg is meant to be? If that is a scenario, if you can try bring them down and put yours on there, I'm not asking you to you know rearrange the whole dumbbell rack, but maybe just put those back in the correct order. It will take literally twenty thirty seconds, and you get actually work on your grip as well. So 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 win win. Mm. And uh, was there anything else you wanted to to mention on that set on that subject before I bring up the last point that I had in mind? Uh, no, shoot, shoot for your last one. So, and I'm actually quite curious to hear about what you have to say because I I know because obviously this was something I used to think about often when I was working in a gym, and I know you continue to work in a gym, and um, and you know what, from just us working out consistently at a gym is, what is your thought process towards unsolicited advice? Uh, that's a that's a good question actually uh <laughs> i don't know i've i've received unsolicited advice and some have been good some has you know left me in a worse estate um but you know what i take it all and i listen to it and i always recommend trying things out don't just put it to bed straight away give give it a try unless it sounds absolutely absurd and if that's the case, then, you know, I'll probably ignore it. But at the stage I'm at now, I'm much more, of course, I'm more able to tell good advice from bad advice. Mm. And I've given advice too to people. And if you don't want to take it, you don't want to hear it. There's not there's not much I can do about that. But I always recommend and advise, if you're hearing it from a trainer or a PT, listen to it, but maybe take it with a bit of a pinch of salt. So they might, they might not be 100%. It might not be best for you. But listen and see what you can modify towards you and your performance of the of the movement or whatever they're advising you on so what would you say in the situation of let's say someone is listening and they've not been going into the they've been going to the gym just for a short while when do they know if they shouldn't if they can see someone like doing something that's very obvious that's wrong they know that for sure when do they know when they shouldn't say anything Man, hit me with hard hard hitters right now. Yeah, if you don't <laughs> even know, you can say that. Honestly, I I can't say there is a time when you actually know when to say something. Mm. Um, you you got to take the gamble. Is I say your approach is key in that situation. You you don't yeah. want to just yeah. jump into yeah. say, hey mate, listen, stop stop doing that. That's just terrible. You know you want to. <laughs> yeah, that's a terrible form. <laughs> yeah, atrocious. What are you doing here? You know you you want to kind of ease into it. Maybe let them do the first set. Catch up. Well, I well, this is my tactic. I say I let them do their first set. If I see it, I let them do it. Um, I try to just slowly work work my way over there. So if if I'm cleaning something or doing some stuff around there, I might walk over there, give them a, a nod, say hey, how you, how's it going, and ask them about the movement itself. 
And then once I asked about the movement and you know what how long we've been doing it, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, I may or may not give them advice depending on how that conversation went. You know, I you can get a vibe of someone if they they want to hear what you're trying to say. You know, they might have that headphone out and might be really engaged in conversation, and then you're like, okay, cool. Now I'm with, now you're more willing to talk to them, or it could be a situation where you're talking to them and they're kind of half in, half out to the conversation. So they've got headphones or the headphones is half off. They're like, yeah, okay, yeah, cool, cool. That's when I okay, I'm not really going to try to you know give my opinion because people can be quite defensive around that stuff and they're quite ag- they're quite aggravated around it. So uh, that's that's how I tend to play it. Yeah, you can just like pick up on social cues. Um, yeah, I think what you said about just that initial conversation just being key or the way you start that yes. conversation uh and like you said just not going in there and just being like whoa that's terrible yeah, form yeah. we need to fix up a lot here dude like yeah that would be not okay um because that's just basic human psychology as well like no one wants to just hear how terribly they're doing something straight away um mm-hmm. You can always you could perhaps describe it in the form of what I like to call a shit sandwich, is where you give them a compliment, something they're doing well. Obviously, don't lie about it. Like I've heard some people saying, "Oh, that's effective. That's 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 ineffective." Like, why would you make up a, something good just to tell them what they need to hear? And I'm like, well, you don't make up something good. You can always pick up on something well, like something good that someone is doing. So let's say they're squatting and and uh, maybe they're just their their depth is extremely poor. And you know for a fact, like you've spoken to the like yeah. Let's say that someone is is squatting. You can see their depth is very poor. You could maybe start off by saying maybe after you've spoken to them a bit, you've introduced yourself, and uh, and you could start off by saying you know your foot position on the squat is very good. Yeah. There you go straight away, and yeah. it's and it's honest. And then you would say you know what you you know to I know you're training like it. it are you training for muscle gain? Maybe you've established that already. You know what? To get even better muscle gain, you could to to get even better muscle gain, squatting with even more depth is going to do you even more. It's, it's going to do you even better. Yeah. yeah. And then you know, and then you could finish that off by saying, but and and then the way you're, but just keep controlling the way you're controlling it right now because you you are controlling it quite well. And, and you know that's just the form of a shit sandwich. So you could yeah, just compliment feedback compliment and that's actually something like i know if you're a keros online member listening to this that's actually something i do with all my keros online members that's something i've always done and that's how i like to re- receive feedback as well obviously i'm always open to receiving feedback especially now i've started with a uh, brazilian jiu-jitsu recently like i'm receiving a lot of feedback very often right now because i've got a lot to learn but um but yeah, you know, in the form of a shit sandwich is just always the best way, way to, to present it to someone. And, um, and yeah, that's just that something that I, yeah, yeah, that's just something I picked up on over time. I can't remember who taught me that. It was it was when I was a teenager as well. Yeah, um, I've, heard, I've heard similar. I'll never get one of the, I don't know if you remember, we were in a class together and they, um, the teacher we, we had, he said that um, everyone likes to be told, well done. And he said, yeah, you tell an adult well done, but because we were like 17 at the time, 18. He said, yeah, you tell an adult well done, they're, they're giddy, they love it. It's great. Yeah, it's like, true. I've it's seen true. it myself with the people I work with. You know, you get, you get some really higher ups in the place I work and no one actually tells them well done or good job because they're so senior that they often tell other people. And when you say it to them, their eyes literally light up. It's like Christmas to them, honestly. Yeah, no, and it's true as well. It's not like these are empty praises. Like, it's mm-hmm. true. And uh, and you're right. You know, there was a book I was reading. I read it back in like 2021 called um, I think it's How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. Have you read that book? I haven't read it, but I've heard of it. You should. It's a really good read. And the craziest part is I think it was written in like the 1920s or 30s or 40s. And the craziest part is it's completely stood the test of time. Yeah. Like you read it today and there's no, there's no part of the book where you're just like, whoa, that's completely un, un, unrelevant nowadays, even though that was from like 90, this was 90 years ago. Like everything in that book is still completely relevant today. Yeah. And I think that's, that, that's just, it just shows how well that book has been written. So anyone listening, so if you're listening to this, definitely read that book, add it to your list. And um, yeah, they, he touches on, within that book, he touches on on the point of like, it's crazy just how many, people just don't compliment others and you know we love to hear it and we, we're always doing it to our pets for example but we just never hand it out to other yeah. people even though they do merit it and 
human psychology 101 again like back to the basics is you give someone a compliment trust me they're more likely to be consistent with it uh, and it's true and this is something i you know with again going back to my keros online members or you could even say on myself with brazilian jiu-jitsu is whenever there's someone because obviously there's always ways we can improve with, with whatever it might be and let's say okay we've got a specific member who is doing it everything really well you know they're very consistent with their their calorie intake they're consistent with their workouts their steps are looking great but you know what maybe they could increase their protein a bit more and i i know this person has been doing it long enough where you know they're definitely ready to start focusing on increasing their protein intake i'd be like you know what your calories are tremendous your your workout consistency has been tremendous you've been progressively overloading really well your steps have been great like it's it's very clear how you, far you've come already and now i think that next step it's just let's start working on that our protein intake a bit more. And I, I know for a fact that once your protein intake improves alongside everything else you've been doing, you're only going to continue to get even better results. So that's just the type of way I would deliver feedback because it's got a lot of positive reinforcement in there as, as well as providing the feedback that they need to hear. And then again, you finish it off with a compliment. And that's just, and again, it's never empty because I, I don't just like play, praise people for the sake of it. Otherwise it would lose its value. But I always, that's how I give feedback because people just respond to it very well. My, me and you included. Yeah, I love, I love getting a nice compliment, especially from yeah. like another coach or someone that's seen in the gym and say, yo man, that, that's, that was a good bench. I'm like, me? Come on. Hmm. Just a normal guy. It's, it's great. It's a great feeling. It's a great feeling. I won't deny that. Yeah. Yeah, man. So yeah, Dale Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Definitely check it out. It's, I probably should reread it even. Otherwise, uh, was there anything else that you wanted to to mention before I wind this down? There's nothing on my cards to mention, for honest with you, mate. Uh, you know, I just appreciate you bringing me back on the podcast. Always great to, you know, talk the shit, as you say, or shoot the shit. I can't remember what you say. <laughs> I think that's an American saying that I picked up from a, an American friend of mine, and I, it just always stuck in my head. I thought it was quite funny. Yes, yes, yes. it's not a British thing. I won't tell, I'll tell you that. But, yeah, appreciate it. Okay. Well, anyway, where can people find you before I finish it? So I am on Instagram at milestone underscore coaching, Twitter, milestone underscore coach, and on Facebook uh, at milestone coach or milestone coaching, I should say, sorry. That's milestone, M-Y-L-E-S-T-O-N-E. And I recently just launched my website. So that is milestonecoaching.com. I'll leave all of those in the, I will leave all those links in the show notes of this podcast episode. If you're listening from Mars' side, Definitely don't hesitate to, to reach out, send over a message. My inboxes are always open on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, at Leo Alves PT. Alves is spelled A L V E S, Leo Alves PT. I'll also leave those links in the show notes. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed the listen. Take care, and I'll see you around. Peace.